introduction. If you forget at the rail, don't worry about it. I'll guide you. This is a place of celebration and thanksgiving, not a place of condemnation and shame. So let us prepare our hearts, minds, and bodies to come into an encounter with God in the event of faith by the power of the Holy Spirit through the proclamation of Christ in word and song in communion. Reconciler. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
before I do the collect, we were missing two slides there. But just so you know, on page 356 is, are all the, 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 the words. It's just the, it's the hymn of praise. It's, it's just located right there. So if that ever happens again, which I'll make a mental note to fix, just remember 356 in the prayer book. Um, and you can go and locate the words. It's just that, put, it's just that poem put to music. Okay, just so you know next time. Now I will say the collect. God be with you. you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of your Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and prepare for the readings. A reading from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. We'll read the psalm today responsibly by half verse. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Abba God alone is my rock and my salvation. In God is my safety and my honor. Put your trust in Abba God always, O people. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. On the scales, they are lighter than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, 
and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it, for the present form of this world is passing away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in God. Abba God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Amen. Please be seated. I checked the candle because it had gone out, but it seems like the wick just slipped right down the middle of that candle. <laughs> I have never seen a taper lose a wick. <laughs> so anyway, miracles. That has to be God's presence. Um, I love our candles. I love them. So I just want you to know that this is 
I checked it just to make sure that, because I could light it, that, 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 that stanza's long. I figured I had time to swing by. That's how I found out the wick had dropped right down the middle of that candle. Sneaky little wick. I'm, I'm not going to be burned today, it said. <laughs> so here we are. Here we are. I was noticing in the um, gradual, you know how sometimes words just hit you? You hear the song every Sunday. I mean, we've been listening to this song for a month now, four Sundays. And I realized that it says that uh, the newborn baby, the newborn Christ, is being guarded by shepherds. Not big military men, not power and might, but shepherds. I found that so striking and humble that shepherds were guarding, you know, whom the shepherds guard and angels sing. The juxtaposition of those two, the low and the high, right? Whew, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Anyway, not to the sermon. What is it, sermon number three? Might be. Um, I just want you to know that I read a sermon today, this morning, written by, well, scribed by someone else, but given by Martin Luther, at which point the first half was given in the morning and the second half was given in the afternoon. So just remember, I only preach at you once a day. Okay, it could be worse. There are voices that will turn your head no matter where you are, no matter how old you are, no matter how long it's been since you've heard that voice, right? You hear it, you know it, and you look in its direction, eager to see the one who spoke. What makes your head turn and your body fill with warmth? Love? A voice that caused fear would make you stop for sure, but not in the same way. You wouldn't turn with eagerness, but freeze out of fright, or you might go running to hide. But the voice of love is way different. Even if this voice were to be frustrated with you, there would be the unyielding synthesis with love that would soothingly resonate with our nervous systems, reminding us even here and now, we are safe with this one who speaks, right? You know the difference. The one who bore you into the world can have the voice loaded with this substance of love, right? Think about it. We all know the voice of this one who carried us, whose voice was the auditory backdrop as we came into existence. The first voice you heard the first sound you heard all come from the center of the one who carried you inside. That heartbeat, those intestinal gurgles, that voice, somewhere in your psyche presents some sort of, it's okay. Well, that's what I tell my kids at least. The voice of the children we bear into the world can also carry this substance of love. No matter how many changes they go through, how deep their voices get, or how infrequently you hear them as they drift off into their own adult lives, you know it. In the cacophony of the crowd, you can locate it. Their mature voices carrying those same idiosyncrasies and inflections they had when they were no higher than your knee. Right? There was a moment when Jack was but a wee little one and all the kids were at a birthday party outside at a park and something happened. All the, we were separated, like all the dads were with the kids in the river and, or the creek and all the moms were hanging out and talking. And all of a sudden there was this holler and it was amazing. All the moms went whoop. And then we listened again to the second scream and I went running. It was Jack. Fetched him, brought him up, or Daniel had him or something. But I got back. By the time I got back, some of my other friends um, who hadn't had children yet looked at me and said, how did you know that was your kid? And I was like, you just know. And you still know, even when they dare to threaten to turn 18 at the end of the year. <laughs> 
So apart from these two specific relationships, others participate in this special distinction of being a voice that stops you where you are, no matter when and no matter what. Dear friends have this capability. Friends spanning eras of life, or maybe lovers here with you now whom you can hold, or ones from a different era can speak to you now, and you would feel the weight of that substance of love that is the marrow of their words. There is a way someone still or could still say your name. Humans know when they are loved by the voice of love targeting their hearts, mind, and soul, and body. It's to love that our ears hearken and our head turns. It's to love that sends our feet. It's love that sends our feet to follow this voice. And then when Jesus was passing by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting nets into the sea for they were fishing. And he said to them, come behind me and I will make you become fishers of people. And immediately leaving their nets, they followed him. Mark begins this storytelling um, by telling us that after John was handed over by some unnamed person, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time has been completed and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. What John started, Jesus took up and ushered in a new era of fulfillment of God's promises made known in the exhortations to change the inner person. That's what that word repent means. It's not just say sorry. Repent means change the inner person, okay? And believe the good news. Those things are always two in combination together. It's not just believe the good news because I need to be honest with you, just to believe the good news without changing the inner person is impossible because the good news is very personal. It's about you and it confronts you and it alters what's on the inside, starting with the heart and maybe moving its way to the mind, or maybe starting with the mind, moving its way to the heart, depends if you're an NT or an NF. Just kidding, it's Myers-Briggs talk if you're not familiar with it, right? Sometimes it starts with the heart, goes to the head, sometimes it starts with the head and goes to the heart. But that inner person is going to be changed. To believe in the good news is to be altered, okay? So it's here amid proclaiming God's good news and the inauguration of a new era, according to Mark, where Jesus begins his public activity. And how does Jesus inaugurate this public activity? Well, with clearly great big fanfare. Just kidding, that's funny. Okay, the only time Jesus gets fanfare is with the palms, okay, right? No, he does no pomp and circumstance, no displays of power and might, but meager human words summoning humble fisher people out of the fringes and unto the light of God, okay? From the edge of the Sea of Galilee and from a dinghy floating in the water, right? That's where the two other brothers are sitting with their, with their dad, right? They're sitting there. They hop out of the boat and they follow Jesus. An amazing moment, right? Jesus summoned the lowly into the majesty of the liberating presence of God. And what happens when Jesus called out, come behind me? Those who were called, go. There's no time lag between the call and the response of the, new, of the now disciples. There's no arguing, waffling, hemming, and hawing. They just went. Immediately, they heard, the summon, they heard Jesus summon them, and they dropped their nets or jumped out of the boat and followed after him without any delay. They obeyed the call of God for no other reason than just because. They simply follow. Now, I need to tell you something about the Gospel of Mark from the perspective of the archaic language, not the archaic language, well, it is archaic, but it's like dead, dead, like Latin's dead, and then Koine Greek is dead, dead, right? Um, and Mark writes his gospel, and nearly every sentence starts with chi, which is the Greek word for and, right? And so it's like and, 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 right? But the better translation of that little simple three-letter word chi is and then, and then. Now sometimes, so Mark's gospel has this rapidity to it, it's fast. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. 
You have to feel that tension of that speed because he's writing to a group of persecuted Christians and he's asking them to hold on, don't be afraid. That's why that ending is so weird, okay? So he's, he's writing fast, the whole story, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then Jesus went here, and the disciples, da, 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 da. but every so often, often he throws in this word, euthos. I think I'm saying it right, okay? Um, it's somewhere in the Greek here. But anyway, that means immediately. So it's like, and then immediately, like even faster, the space between the actions becomes even smaller for Mark when he throws that in there because he's already writing super fast, okay? But then he throws in this euthos, and that means immediately. When the disciples turn and follow Jesus, it wasn't a, hey, Simon, do you think we should go? Oh, Andrew, I don't know. I think we have some time on our hands. You know, maybe we should. We got some fish here. It, there's nothing. It is drop and go. That's what Mark is trying to communicate. It is so fast. There is no time lag between the two. I'm, hemi I'm forcing this, okay? As simple as Jesus' summons, so was the disciples' response. Jesus looked and spoke. They heard and followed. God spoke, and there was light. No grand gestures, no cleaning up, no getting right with God first. They heard and they went. All four summoned fishermen, Simon, who's also Peter, by the way, Andrew, Jacob, and John, radically departed what they knew, what was comfortable, and what was familiar to follow, okay? They left what they knew to follow Jesus and received a brand new beginning filled with what would become uncomfortable, unknown, and strange. They didn't follow off of a guarantee of a fulfillment of a comfortable promise. They heard their name and they went. In following when Jesus called, they were guided into a new beginning that started and will end with love. When Jesus called these humble men, love beckoned them into the light of God by the divine voice of love, which is none other than the divine spirit hovering over the deep, eagerly seeking, seeking and summoning the beloved out of the deep. Remember that sermon from two weeks ago? The articulation of let there be light and the God's spirit hovering over and always out to seek the beloved. Okay, so I don't know about you, but this story gets me every time I read it. I mean, they just followed, <laughs> right? Like I am all for like a little bit of chaos and spontaneity and all that great stuff, but I'm just still like aghast. They just followed right? It's beyond comprehension for me. I don't think I've ever done anything that quickly, and I'm pretty quick. I'm left with a lurking question, would I go, right? If this story doesn't force you into a corner, I need to make sure that you're listening because it should force you into a corner. Would I follow this man who summoned me to come follow him? Suspending for a moment my 21st century mind, my stranger danger and my ingrained fear of sinister windowless vans and the large quantities of candy harbored behind those doors. Some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. If I suspend those for a moment, would I follow Jesus? Would I give up everything and follow after this one proclaiming the kingdom of God come? Would I, could I, and this is the real question, recognize the voice of divine love summoning me out of the chaos and the deep? To be a disciple of Christ starts with hearing. I don't mean that just in like the able way. I mean hearing through your eyes, hearing through your ears, hearing through your senses, hearing through your smells, hearing through your taste, whatever it is. We all hear differently. It starts with hearing. Hearing the divine summons, the divine call of God to you. Jesus calling your name. The spirit luring your heart toward this one who is the son of God. Remember, as I know, know that you have read the Gospel of Mark a number of times, but Mark 1.1 1, 1 starts with what proclamation? This is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you ever want to know what Mark's Gospel about, just hit up Mark 1.1, 1, 1. okay? 
To be a disciple of Christ is to hear and immediately follow, even if it means leaving everything behind that once defined you, that no longer can, because you've heard God's voice in Christ by the power of the Spirit. And once you've heard that voice, I have bad news for you. You can't unhear it. Beloved, God calls you day and night, summon you unto God's self, eager to bathe you in the love, feeling that loving divine voice echoing throughout the halls of time, calling for you. I pray you, you hear the call of God in Christ and that you drop your nets and follow this voice of love. For here in this love is life and light. Here is God and here is your rest and comfort no longer striving in the way of the world, desperate to fill an empty void to validate yourself or feel loved, here in the summons, in, in, the, in following, you find the entirety of God, the very one who spoke the cosmos into existence and the one now speaking to you through Mark, through the story. This very big God, lightly whispering to every fiber of your being, beloved. In whatever posture you find most comfortable, and if you feel so called, please join with me in the words, the affirmation of faith located on the screens in front of you. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of all living things. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, he died alone and forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present throughout all ages, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit burning with Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. Again, in whatever posture you find most comfortable, please join with us in the prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for our community, the church, and the world. Creator, we pray for unity within the church of God and between all nations. Grant that all who know you by any name may truly and humbly serve you and their neighbor. We pray for all bishops, priests, deacons, and leaders in all traditions. We pray especially for our leadership team here at Nativity. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in all the communities, states, regions, and nations of the world. Give each of us gathered here grace, strength, and courage to be examples of your love in all that we do. That our words and deeds may bring your spirit to others. May our care for this world, our island home, show the gratitude and respect given by welcome guests. Our 
have compassion on your people who are suffering from grief or troubles. Give to our above give to our beloved departed eternal rest. Let us pray out loud or in silence for our own needs and those of others. Grant us these blessings, O Lord. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God, our neighbor, and creation. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Please rise. The peace of God be always with you. Greet each other in acceptable forms of peace and hello. Hello. <laughs> Please be seated. Now's the fun time. Blessings, anniversaries, birthdays, houses, horses, travel. <laughs> Got one. <laughs> Fished it in. <laughs> Come, follow me. <laughs> All right, travel. Um, again, in the Episcopal Choose Your Own Adventure book. Find yourself on page 831, prayer number 53 at the very top four travelers, okay? And we're gonna fill in that long line with a very short Jess, okay, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, they make it so just in case you have like, you know, your name is like Epigenia. <laughs> or Jess. Or Jess, <laughs> right. Um, you guys ready with me? All right, so I'm gonna put my hand on your shoulder. You okay with that? O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, in particular Jess. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Yeah, blessings. Sometimes I close my prayer book and then I lose my spot. It's terrifying. <laughs> That's why my version has all these little strings, because we lose our spots. <laughs> We're not supposed to. Um, anyone else? Okay. So what we're going to do now is uh, let us, with gladness, present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
This is God's table for God's people. Everyone who feels so called to come forward and participate is not only invited, but deeply encouraged to do so. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. It is truly right to glorify you, God, and to give you thanks for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light, inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them, we give voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. God, glorious in power, your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might care for and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you again and again. You called us into covenant with you. And through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. God, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, God, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. 
God, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, God. God, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, God, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God and Creator, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hagia, tois hagios, holy gifts for holy people. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Ooh, try that more often. Eternal God, heavenly creator, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacraments of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you and keep you. God, make God's face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. God, lift up God's countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the creator, the reconciler, and the redeemer be among you and remain with you always. been encountered by God in the event of faith in the proclamation of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit go go forth into the world carrying and sharing the grace and mercy of God bringing God's love to all alleluia alleluia